guys, um, I'm here today to do my June wrap up um, because it's almost the end of July, so it's the perfect time to do that. <laughs> um, let me see, I'm trying to find this. Okay, so I have already discussed all of these books, so this is just going to be kind of like a stats ranking, and then I'm going to talk about some movies at the end, so just FYI. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to mention, I'm going to try to insert screenshots here of my two two pie chart spreadsheets that I'm focusing the most on. So this is screenshots of the end of end of June. So um, nothing that I've read in July is counted in here. So right now I'm at 49% um, U.S. authors and 70% English uh, as like the as the first language of the the book. Uh, so non-translated is 70%. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so these are two things that I'm going to be focusing a lot more on the, at the end of the year. I am pleased with the fact that it's less than 50% U.S. and 70%, um, you know, English. But I would like that to be a little bit more over, you know, a little bit <laughs> leaning more towards a translation. So um, I'm not sure about next month because I already have, like, my set TBR, but for the fall and um, winter, I'm going to be, I guess, mostly fall because winter is just December. Anyways, I'm going to be focusing a lot more on that. Um, and then I did want to mention, too, for my book balance sheet, um, I DNF'd, or I, I don't know if DNF'd is the right word, but I'm unhauling quite a few things, so I'm going to show those to you at the beginning also. Um, and I read quite a few things. I did buy a lot, so I think... Um, the reason that I'm getting rid of so many books is because I, I bought a lot of stuff. Um, but my total ended up being um, that I have one less book on my bookshelves and 80 more pages. So I must have bought bigger books than I got rid of. Um, anyways, so those are those things. So let me first show you the books that I've unhauled. Uh, the first one is Half Resurrection Blues by Daniel Jose Older. Um, I have zero interest in reading this. I got this in the quarterly Book Riot subscription, and I just, like, it's just not my style of book at this point. Again, maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Um, the next one I feel really guilty about getting rid of because my friend Chelsea gave it to me, but it's um, Peyton Amberg by Tama Janowitz. And I feel like this is, it's some kind of sexy book. I don't really know. It's like a woman wandering the streets of New York having sex with people. I, I really don't know. I tried. Um, I'm not opposed to like romance or erotica or whatever, but I I just like can't be bothered. And I try. I think I wouldn't just get rid of it. So I, I don't really remember, but I'm sure that I read like the first couple pages and didn't get on with the writing. Sorry, Chelsea, if by some weird thing you're watching this. <laughs> um, the next book that I have is the, from the Nobel Prize Library, and it's uh, Faulkner, O'Neill, and Steinbeck. So I think it's just, a f yeah, so it's a, a, f a few things from each of them. Uh, oh, you totally cannot see that. And I just, like, prefer not having my books like this. I don't know. I like having them separate because I keep my books chronological by publication date. Um, and I have no, I don't know how this came in my possession. It probably was at my dad's house. Um, and I just, I have no connection to that at all. Uh, the next one I also have no connection to, and I also think I got it at my dad's house. Maybe, actually, I think I bought this at someone's, like, garage sale, but it's, uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, um, which is by Jules Verne, I believe. So the reason I'm getting rid of this one is because it is not cute. <laughs> it's like really, really nasty. I probably could just dust it, but I don't know. I just don't like dirty things. I'm I'm one of those people. Uh, so while the cover is pretty amazing, I just don't want this on my shelves. I don't want to touch it, so why would I want it on my shelves? And the last one I definitely got from my dad's house, and it's England in Literature. And it's basically a textbook, so I really don't need that. And it's, I don't know, maybe I'll take pictures of these to, to try to read these people later in the future. So anyways, those are the things that I'm unhauling. Now my DNFs. <laughs> um, 
So I don't remember what order I DNF'd these in, but I DNF'd uh, my Bookie Wook, and so I'm unhauling my Bookie Wook too. I used to be obsessed with Russell Brand. I like had the biggest crush on him. I loved him so much. Uh, you know when like Forgetting Sarah Marshall came out and all that stuff, and I just like adored him. So I bought his memoirs. I was also really into celebrity memoir and like specifically memoirs of people like drinking and having a lot of sex because you know when you're in your early 20s. Those are the things that you like fixate on. So I read, you know, I hope they serve beer in hell and Chelsea Handler is my horizontal life and are you there vodka to meet Chelsea, like all those kinds of books. So I figured these would be in the same kind of vein because he has some addiction issues. Um, and while the writing actually was not bad, I think I, I, I did read, you know, at least like 20 or 30 pages of this. The writing was not bad. Um, I do think that if you like Russell Brand, this is probably not a bad thing to read. I just do not care anymore. So why am I going to spend my time reading two fairly sized books about a guy that I just like don't think about on a day-to-day -day basis? Like I just couldn't be bothered. Um, and then the next one is Orphan Train by Christina Baker Klein. Uh, this was a book that I bought because a bookseller recommended it to me in a Barnes & Noble should not have listened to her advice though because I asked for a recommendation and then she was like, oh, let's go look at the bestsellers together. Laverne! Beep! Laverne's so crazy right now. Uh, so I shouldn't have listened to her because I'm sure she did not read this book. This book is so badly written in my opinion. I cannot badly, poorly, whatever. Um, it's so, so bad. Uh, it, it, it's like a dual timeline kind of thing. I don't really even know, but the like, pre so it, it starts off like back in the day and then it jumps to present time and it's this girl that's fostered by, um, by a couple and like the, the wife of the couple is a total bitch. Like I cannot even, how old is she again? Molly mumbles. She's an, she's annoyed with herself for feeling nervous. Who cares? It just, I just can't, I that was not a good example. There, there's, the writing in this is just not for me. I just find this to be a very classic example of just not good. <laughs> so, bye bye. But it, it, the, the, the foster mom, she is a total, total bitch. Like, she's so mean. I just don't understand why, it's just gross. Anyways, so now. My books, <laughs> this is going to go pretty quick. I'm just going to rank them. Uh, my least favorite book, surprisingly, of June was Cannibalism by Belle Shoot. Um, I, again, have talked about all of these, so I will try really hard to remember to link below where, like, the I timestamp them so that you can just, like, click the link and it will go straight to where I'm talking about this specific book. Um, but I did have some issues with that. Uh, then next is Javier Marias, uh, Madame du Défant and the Idiots, and this is translated from Spanish by Marguerite Dul Costa, and he's a Spanish author. Then uh, the Best American Comics from 2013, um, edited by Jeff Smith, um, and this this was really good. There's a lot of I, I just love, I love these so much. I've had a pretty good breeding month because the rest, like all these are really, really good. Um, then the Moonstone, The Boy Who Never Was by Sean, Sion, I don't know how to pronounce it. Don't come after me, people. I, uh, and this is translated from Icelandic by Victoria Cribb. And this is like based on true events, uh, coming of age, queer. It's really good. Um, then Stephen Florida by Gabe Habash, ha Habish, uh, again, coming of age wrestler. I will link when I talk about all these below, uh, but surprising. I did not think I was going to like this. Very surprising. Uh, then Troubling Love by Elena Ferrante, um, translated by Anne Goldstein. Then Fyodor Dostoevsky, Fyodor Dostoevsky's Notes from Underground. And this is translated by Constance Garnett. And my favorite book of June was The Lost Daughter by Elena Ferrante. I know everyone thinks that this book cover is hilarious or upsetting. Whatever. <laughs> it is kind of upsetting, but I think it's super funny. And this is also translated by Anne Goldstein. So if I had to recommend one book from what I read in June... 
this would be it. I loved it so, so much. All right, uh, so now I'm just going to quickly mention um, the movies that I watched last month. Uh, I watched Always Be My Maybe, which is on Netflix. It's the Ali Wong and, oh my gosh, Randall Park. I think that's his name. Uh, Rom-com. I, I did really enjoy this. It's a solid three star for me. I'm just not a rom-com person. So like in general, I thought it was it was really cute and fun, but it kind of depressed me a little bit because Randall Park's character is like a guy that gets high all the time and like, you know, lives in his hometown. I don't know. A lot of like aspects of it kind of give me these feelings of when I go home and like drive around where I went to high school and stuff. Just like, I don't know. It, it, it makes me like feel kind of heavy. Um, and and I, I got those emotions while I was watching that. So I think that's part of the, the point though. But either way, um, it was a really cute rom-com. Um, and then I watched Primer from 2004, which is a really weird sci-fi movie that I don't think I understood at all. Um, but it has to do with time travel and it is a very strange movie. So, oh, and I will link all the trailers to all these movies down below, just FYI. Um, then I watched Wine Country, which was so funny. Um, that one is, it has like Maya Rudolph and uh, a lot of famous people. Rachel Dratch. It's Rachel Dratch's like 50th birthday party, I think, or something like that. So they're all like on a wine country trip. And it's just so funny because when you've got like a really tight group of friends, Especially because there's so many of them. My tight group of friends is just a, a few people, so it's not, like, the same. But there's a lot of, you know, people not being 100% truthful with other people. And so everything kind of, like, comes to the surface on this uh, weekend trip. And it was a riot. Uh, then I watched The Dead Don't Die, which is that new Jim Jarmusch, Jarmusch, I don't know how to pronounce his name either, movie. Um, this was okay. I definitely was disappointed in it, uh, which is sad because it's got Bill Murray and it's a zombie comedy, but um, I just felt like it was trying a little bit too hard. There's one really, really, really good line that's uh, Selena Gomez. I, I was going to say Serena Williams. <laughs> uh, Selena Gomez is in the movie, and she has one line that honestly made me laugh out loud. And when I just think about it, it makes me laugh out loud because it was so funny. There's a lot of, like, it's very you know but it does try a little bit too hard um especially like with the environmental aspects like you we get it <laughs> there is a problem with the climate I feel like you're not convincing anyone who doesn't believe in climate change and people who already believe in climate change don't need to be told what you're telling us so it just was like a little bit too much in my opinion um but it was really weird it was fine I probably wouldn't pay money to see it in theaters if I were you. Uh, <laughs> it's too late for me. It's probably not even in theaters anymore, but um, I feel like that's probably like a, a rent it or like go to Netflix kind of thing. Um, and then my favorite movie. I honestly think this is my favorite movie of all time. I watched Do the Right Thing for the first time and oh my lordy, that was so, so good. That movie, I just can't believe how brilliant Spike Lee is like that that movie was so good it is so first of all it's well shot it's well acted Spike Lee's acting not not superb but like in general really good acting um but it shows like every possible aspect of like the racial problem that exists it has you know it's just so good. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I know how else to explain it, but basically Spike Lee's character works for a pizzeria that's in, like, a predominantly black neighborhood. I don't remember where exactly in New York it is, but, um, basically everyone is black except the, um, the owner of the pizzeria is Italian and he's got his two Italian sons. And then across the street, there's, um, an Asian family. I don't know, like, where they're from exactly, but they're, they've, like, just come to the U.S., I think, or, like, they're fairly recent immigrants to the U.S. Um, and it, but besides that, everyone else is black or Hispanic. Yeah, there's Hispanic people too. 
that Rosie Perez is in this movie. <laughs> Hello, please. Um, and it's just, it's so good because I feel like the three, like, white guys have all, like, very different views on, like, the race thing and it's just it just blew my mind and the the way that he like brought in Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. and like those two those two views on on the whole racial situation it just honestly like thinking about it is gonna make me cry again <laughs> sorry that movie is so good if you haven't seen it if you take anything away from this video is that you need to go watch do the right thing that movie blew my mind now that I'm thinking about it, I need to go buy it. I was going to buy it and I just, you know, things happen. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, so those are the things. I don't really have any podcast recommendations. Oh, I do have a TV recommendation though, but I just watched it in July, so I'll save it for July. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, those are the things. If you've read any of these, if you have anything to say to me, please talk to me in the comments. Um, especially if you have other recommendations about <laughs> movies that are like do, do the right thing. That I just, ugh, that movie was so good. All right, anyways, I will talk to you later. Bye.